to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> First order of business is approve the minutes of the regular session of the Lincoln County Commission meeting that was held on March the 9th, 2015 at 6 p.m. I'll say no. I'll say. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. That would be unanimous motion. Next we have a <coughs> comment. Dr. Vance? Uh, the first thing we have down here, I want to ask uh, Charles Bates to come forward. <coughs> And if anybody's with you, they come with you too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move over again. And what, um, I had the uh, pleasure of going the uh, week before last up to uh, Ken Lawson and uh, at uh, Mr. Bay's invitation and uh, Mr. Uh, Joe Atkins' invitation to meet with the veterans up there. They were very kind and, and, and gracious uh, in receiving me as a member of our commission and uh, they, they have some awards for not only the commission but uh, for JROTC, so Mr. Basin. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, what I did, we got these, um, there's the Lincoln County Commission but I'm going to do the ROTC guys first and this is a special award recognition from the Military Order of Purple Heart and we're the Chapter 733 in uh, Lincoln and Logan. And these guys, we had a half on before the trail died for uh, amputees this year and these guys came and posted the colors and they did a wonderful job and I thought we would uh, give you know, them something other to hang up in school. It's uh, for your dedication, honoring Americans Combat Wounded Veterans, being a sponsor for the West Virginia Purple Heart Trail Ride, presented by the uh, members of Chapter 733, the Military Order Purple Heart. And here's the uh, flag. There's the pretty flag. And uh, anybody wants to watch it, it's on YouTube under Christian Day TV World. <laughs> Plug a little bit. <laughs> Come on, Commissioner Harless. Remember this one's happened before. Yeah. Okay, this one here is for. Uh, I'm Charles Bates. Uh, this is a special recognition for stood up on the county of Lincoln for becoming the first Purple Heart County in the state of West Virginia. And uh, back then it was Charles McCann, Dr. Charles Vance, and KK. So well, I got him a plaque, but I was waiting to um, give it to them when we was going to do a sign, but the state of West Virginia won't let us put the signs up now, so I'll go ahead and get it to them now. And appreciate it. I know you're going to hear name on that. <laughs> now this one here is for, they every year they kind of, every other year they give us a little bit of money Mostly, a whole lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> if anything over $5, a whole lot of money. <laughs> but this one here for dedication for helping us, and I appreciate it. I'll get the yeah. man. He's a big man now. So. <laughs> you guys. Next we have David Lucas with um, Parts Crime Watch. Yes. 
I thank you for the opportunity to address the commission. Um, I am with the Hearts Crime Watch, and I just want to tell you a little bit about our Crime Watch. We uh, we got a group of 12 or 15 people that are really, really dedicated to what we do. They uh, they're like me. They got kids and grandkids, and they they're interested in you know trying to keep our community safe. And we have some men that do extraordinary work. We've got men who are at the bank every morning when it opens, or at the bank every evening when it closes. They're at the Hearts Clinic every evening, the late evening when they close. Well, they're on Mondays. They, some, we have men there. Um, we keep an eye on our pharmacy, a lot of the other local businesses. Uh, I know a few years ago when Judy Johnson was here, there was a, a wake in the community and there was a house that they were worried about somebody possibly breaking into it. She called and asked if we'd kind of patrol that house and watch it, and we did. And so, so we do a lot of good things in our community. And, uh, the county commission has been really good to us. Uh, I know I've been president for about four years. In the first couple of years, uh, uh, the county commission uh, they 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 really support us and really help us out real real well. And, um, I haven't come over and asked for any money or any funding, so that might be my fault. I don't know, but um, I know during that two-year period of time, about every three or four months, we get a check from the county commission for for five hundred dollars. We used that to buy gas and stuff for our men that got out and patrolled, and uh, that really helped us out a whole lot. Uh, but now we haven't we haven't received anything from the county commission since I believe August of 2013. But like I said, that might be my fault. I haven't come over and haven't asked for anything. Um, but as I said, the county commission was real good to us. Uh, when Thomas Ramey was on the commission here, he attended several of our meetings, and uh, every year we tried to have a little Christmas dinner. And, first two years I was a president, the county commission actually reimbursed us for what we spent on that Christmas dinner. Uh, last couple of years, the, we've actually done it ourselves. Our, our ladies have cooked and we haven't, uh, we haven't asked the county commission for any money. But uh, they've been real good to us. And, uh, but like I said, we haven't received any funding. And I think that, you know, I think we do real good work. I think we do, you know, real good things for our community. And uh, I don't know whether it's a communication problem. I know, uh, I'd sent some receipts in uh, where we had bought some batteries for our handheld radios and some magnetic signs for our vehicles. And we had, we had purchased those. I actually used my credit card to purchase them. And we sent a, uh, the receipts over to the, to the lady at the county commission. And it went on for a long time. We never did receive reimbursement for it. And I called her. And she said, well, now we're doing things differently now. Now we're doing everything with purchase orders. You have to have a purchase order. She said, but, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, Receipts have been turned in and they've been, you know, approved for, for payment. And uh, we turn, I sent those over in December of 2013, and we received the $209 reimbursement in October of 2014. So that's how long it took us to get that reimbursement. Uh, so I didn't know if the purchase order thing that maybe you all instituted is different. And I, and I fully understand purchase orders. I know how that works. I was a principal high school for you know 12 years, and every check you write, you have to have a purchase order for it. I understand that. So I don't know if that was part of the problem or what, but uh, I just came tonight to you know to you know, to ask you if it's if it's something on our end that we're doing, you know, are we not? Do we need to come and ask? Or, uh, I've talked to Doc Vance called me the other day and we he and I had a little discussion, but uh, I'd really like for it to you know for to get back kind of like it was. I, I, I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of reminded of a story uh, about a about a preacher. Uh, He's pastor in church, and he got up one morning. And he said, uh, "Told his congregation, said I'm going to preach an interactive sermon this morning." And everybody looked at him. He said, "Throughout my sermon, he said every now and then I'm going to stop and say a word, and when I say that word, I want you to stand up and sing. First song comes to mind." And so he got to preaching, and he stopped, and he said the word "power." The whole congregation got up, and sung "Power in the Blood." First verse of "Power in the Blood." He started preaching a little bit more, and he preached a little longer. And stopped and said the word "grace." And the whole congregation stood up and said the word great and started singing Amazing Grace. He went a little longer and stopped and said the word cross. The whole congregation stood up and started singing the whole rugged cross. He went a little longer and he said the word sex. That church got as quiet as you hear a pin drop. Finally, a little late, five year old lady in the back got up and started singing precious memories. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, Doc, I'd like to get back to that. You know, I'd like to get back to the way it was, I guess. That's what I'm asking you about. 
I'd like to get back to the way it was. So, is it something we're doing wrong? <laughs> no, I think when I, we checked into it, did they not we get a grant originally that we were paying that $500 out of and things like that? And that was a one time grant, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was, I mean, yeah. It was, it was back when you were talking about getting right. those $500 right. Right. quarterly and things like that. And then I think uh, in talking with Mary, basically the way we went since then has been purchase orders with it. And, and I don't know that. Um, I would think that would be all that we required. We're not looking at, we were talking maybe a few hundred dollars basically looking at things like that as far as your expenses and things of that nature, gas. Yeah, gas and things, things like that. But, but how would you handle that through a purchase order? I mean, you know, if, if people get gas at different places, I mean, how would that work? Gas would be difficult, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how we could, but we need to work something out. And I don't know, how do we, are we giving any money to the other prime lunch groups at all? Yeah. So that's that's been it's not just you guys you know basically as as far as I know we didn't have any funding mechanism for that <clears throat> but you know that doesn't mean we can't ask our uh, legislators to, to get us a, a community participation grant for that for the crime watches across the county like you got before I mean, and that would allow us to give monies to all the crime watches in the county because I'm sure you I, I know you guys do a good job because I used to work at the clinic there but uh, you know we have other crime watches working across the county and we, we do need to look at some kind of a funding mechanism for you guys to where you know at least you'd have you'd be able to spend up to X number of dollars or something of that nature so we know. But right now we don't have any funding mechanism. There's none none at all for crime watch. Right. There's nothing and there's not been any in the budget. It wasn't any last year or this year. Because we use that grant money initially to divide it up among different crime watches. Uh, but like I said, I, I don't we'll have to figure out some way that we can uh, uh, be able to reimburse you for some of those expenses, you know. I mean, but in the meantime, if you're not going to get ten thousand dollars or whatever right now, you know, because that would have to go for the legislature and governor. And so, but uh, Mr. Luther, you, did, you didn't send a request in last year. No. Okay. Other than that. and that's that's no. kind of the way. No, we haven't asked the county commission. I mean, you know, for 19 months we've been making on our own. We yeah, it's pretty tough. You know, it's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've been, you know, we've been making on our own. But uh, it, it's, it's, it takes a lot of pressure off, you know, if, if you look at right. that. Well, and I don't think we have addressed that for any of the uh, crime law as far as how we handle the expenses right now and things. So, and uh, I don't know, uh, once we get this budget, we'll see how it does. We'll know more about how much money we have for things and things of that nature. But uh, I think it's, you know, when you've got people willing to volunteer their own time and their own energies to do things, it's important to help them as much as we can. And I think that's what we did initially with all crime watches. But as I said, it's probably been maybe more on our fault because we didn't know that there was a, a need for continued payments and things like that because we could, you know, uh, we could approach our legislature and some legislators and see if they could uh, get some money for us for that. But that's what needs to be done. I mean, ultimately, that's what will solve the situation if we know we've got, if we can get $10,000 or whatever the amount will be. We could draw upon those for whatever expenses you all have in those as we did before. So, you know, I we'll I don't know if we need to initiate it or if we need, but we'll, what we'll do is get in touch with uh, I think Jeff Eldridge was the one before that worked on that for us. And I'll get in touch we'll get in touch with Jeff and, and see if we can get some funding through the uh, governor's uh, community participation grant for it. But in the meantime, we'll kinda of have to get our heads together about how we handle expenses for the ground launches and stuff. So but, but I you know appreciate you coming before us because I think I, you know, I try to remember everything I can about what we need to do, but sometimes I guess if we don't hear from people, and it's not your fault, because I'm sure that some of the other, we have, you know, the other members of Crown Watch, a couple of them are always around, you know, so we get to see them and stuff. But, you know, I still think the best thing to do is make it known to us what your expenditures that you need reimbursed on, and then let us work on some kind of a system where we can see how much money we can put into the, uh, the, the, the kitty for the Crown Watch units. So, you know. Are you saying you want us to keep receipts for the gas and stuff? Would that be sufficient? I think we'd have to have some kind of yeah, receipts, receipts, receipts for them, and then what we can do is, you know, reimburse. You know, and and, and, it's not, and, and, and I know that people, you know, people volunteer the time to do this, and they're, and they're out spending their own money now. They're not into it to take any government money that's not necessary, you know. So I, I don't think that's a problem. And, but we need to have two mechanisms. One is to make sure we get funding from the state as much as we can, the other being see what we can do for you guys and, and counter your expenses in the meantime. Okay. 
All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you. You call me, let me know. I will. Right. Next, we have discussion of concern possible action. Um, Terry and Terry. Yes. <laughs> I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, my name is Terry Martin. We were here in November uh, to brief you and I'll bring you up to date as far as our project in Boone County is, which is the Mooresville Cameo project. Uh, we are going down into Lincoln County through Woodvale and then out to Mooresville in the Cameo area. Uh, we have been watching and been going to the Lincoln County PSD meetings uh, regularly. We understand that they've awarded their contract and you're getting ready to start construction on your alcohol project that you had funded. So we, uh, the Boone County Commission, began uh, and passed a resolution in order to expand the Boone County PSD. That was on the 11th of March. Uh, we're setting up a public hearing on the 21st of April. And I wanted to have left, uh, this is notices and maps of the, of the boundaries and the, and the dates. And I just would like for you to post them. But the main reason we're here tonight is just to answer any questions you might have. We told, you, we told you when we came in November, we would keep you posted and updated because this is your residence. This is residence of Lincoln County. And uh, I guess that's, the, the, that's what we're here for tonight. Now, a uh, question. Does sure. this uh, affect the Lincoln PSB, these projects at all? Uh, as far as we're going, we're parallel with them. There's an area that is questionable, but if, you know, we're going to go past if the, you have the funds at the end of the project to do that. We just want to make sure that we pick up everybody that you can't pick up toward back to the Boone County line. This, guy, this guy's not coming no. into the Lincoln PSD's territory as far as we know. No, not because you've bid the project and you've awarded the project. Any questions or anything from any? We just want to keep you, you know, you, you in turn probably, I think that, that you have uh, acquired an attorney because you have to do a, a boundary reduction. And I think he, we've sent him all the paperwork and we've sent you the, our, our copies of the, the resolution in order. And I think you probably have to have a public hearing also. Yeah, is it a public, I mean, a reduction of the Lincoln PSB's service yes. area? Yes. It's areas that they're not going to be serving. And I don't think they have any plans on serving. Have you presented that to the end? We've been, we've been there and they've said go forward. But we wanted to make sure that their bids were, you know, were done and they awarded contracts before we started this process. That's what we've been doing for November, December, January, and February until March. I think they awarded on the uh, 4th or the 5th of March. But we've I, just, been, I just know when we did the Upper Fig Creek extension, uh, we self that project basically, and, and uh, we had to go to the, the had to leave the PSD and agree to it and things of that nature. So essentially, you have to have to do that. This yes, time. yes. Anytime, yeah. Before we can uh, move forward, we have to have those. We don't want to go across your boundaries and then, you know, and then have somebody question it during the process. We want to make sure that this is completed before we go for <coughs> certificate of convenience. Well, I'm, I'm assuming the attorney you're talking about from Florida? Yes. Yeah. 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 I think we need to get confirmation from them when they're at with them. Or the GSK from their attorney. We'll call Sags on Florida. Okay. We'll just kind of get going yeah. with Yeah, and we've sent him everything we've done, too. So he's up to, up to speed. Okay. Thank you so much. Based on the agenda, it's a review and appointment of the civil service commission. I motion to appoint uh, JF Hughes to the civil service commission. I'll second that. Motion and second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? It's unanimous. To approve a grant authorizing the president to sign the drawdown request for a small piece of law grant in the amount of $13,536.06. Project. We are presenting, so I'm motioning to get the 
until April the 21st. Commissioner, can I have a second, please? Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. I was talking for public comments and I was late. Sorry. <laughs> I'll stay for two minutes. Go ahead. Sure. I have you. This is uh, Chad Stewart. I'm Chad Stewart, Congressman Jenkins. And last time I was here, uh, commissioners, we had um, talked about the Lower Mud River project. And I have with me a letter from the congressman for, uh, that will be addressed to the governor to support the small city block grant and as well you'll have one the mail to you and you can have this copy so basically it's just uh, us for the congressman giving his support for the project that's much needed in the area and well, i'm glad to give it to you well i appreciate you'll it. get the mail as well thanks to the governor thank you so much thank you until, until congressman jenkins you really appreciate this this uh, speed gating the thing along for us and this is how we get these monies for these projects is to be able to get these people lined up and talk with people so that they understand the importance of these projects and, and then be sure to tell them you're ready for sure well thank you Same here. thank you so much so uh, I move that we adjourn or well, it's not adjourn but I remember recess until April the 21st officially late 11 and we'll do that at 3 o'clock and we're not going to have a regular session meeting next week oh yeah and we will Cancel the regular session meeting next week, and we will meet the third Thursday of April. At three o'clock, is that right? Or the, we're going to lay the levy on the twenty-first at three o'clock, and then on the third Thursday of April, we're going to have our regular scheduled meeting at six. 
We got a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, we're on recess.